Hello all, welcome back. In this lecture, we will be talking about all the prerequisites that needs to be addressed before we start configuring our Simaki XTM environment. The first prerequisite is to have a database. For this course, we will be using Oracle database, which can be downloaded for free from Oracle website. Second would be SQL Developer, which would act as a client to interact with the database server, as well as to access the Simaki metadata tables and your master data. This can be downloaded for free from Oracle website as well. Third is Java. You can download Java from Oracle for free as well. Once we have downloaded Java, we need to set an environment variable Java home and point it to the installation directory of your Java. The fourth prerequisite is to download the Simaki pre-configured package from Simaki website. I have opened all these four links in Microsoft Edge, so let's go there. If we start from the very first tab, you can see that we are on Oracle official website. Here we can see different Oracle software versions. For this course, I would be using Oracle Database 18C Express Edition. So if I click that, I will be seeing Linux and Windows compatible versions for the downloadable things. I am on Windows 64, so I would be using this. Once I click that, I would be asked to accept the license agreement. If I check this checkbox and click on this button, I will be taken to the Oracle sign on page. If you have got your credential, you can put your username and password, and once you click sign in, the Oracle download will start automatically. But if you don't have your username and password, you can sign up for a free account and then download the Oracle package. I have got this package already, so I won't be doing it again. If we move to the next tab, here we can see we have got SQL Developer Downloads. I have always used Windows 64 bit with JDK included, simply because I don't want to configure SQL Developer to point to the Java home. It comes as a prepackaged application and it's very simple to use. If I click download, I would be asked to do the same process again, which I did for Oracle Database Server. I have to accept the license agreement and then sign in with my credentials to download this free package. I have got this already on my machine, so I won't be repeating this process. If I go to the third tab, here I can see different Java versions available. I am using Java 11, so if I click on JDK download here, I will be seeing different compatible versions based on the operating systems. So. As we are on Windows, I would be using this. Again, it's present on my machine, so won't be doing it again. And the last tab shows Simaki website itself. So if we scroll down, we can see different offerings from Simaki. For this course, we would be using on-premise version. Once you click download here, you will start seeing uh, a zip package being downloaded. So once we have got all these four, We, sh we should be seeing something similar to this. We will now have three zip packages and one .exe file for Java. I would stress that please create a separate directory for your downloads. I have created Simaki and then downloads within that so that I can have download from different websites into this subdirectory. So let's start with Java. So if I install Java, I just have to double click it. I have already got this configured so it will give me an, a message that it is already there. Would you like to reinstall it? I would say no. But it would be very simple. With few clicks, you will have your Java set up on your local machine. The only thing that you need to remember is your Java home where you have installed the Java during the installation process because we need to set that environment variable of Java home to point to your installation directory. So if I show you where I have installed Java, I'm in my C drive. If I go to program files, Java, JDK 11.0.9, this is where I have installed Java. Now I have to set that environment variable. If I go to my search bar and type env, I need to click the edits, the system environment variables. In the system properties, I need to click on environment variables. And in system variables, you can see that I have already created Java. So, if we validate this path, 
we can see that it's the exact path where my Java installation sits on my local laptop. So if I bring it down, how do we create this variable? You can simply click new, type in the name of the variable and your home directory in the variable value. So if I click cancel, if I click edit, you can see the same thing here. The installation directory as well as the variable. So if you click OK, 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 that's it for Java. Now we have fully configured Java on our local laptop. Now, next thing would be to unzip all these three packages. So if I go one directory back, I have got these unzipped packages here. We have got SQL Developer, we have got Simaki, and we have got Oracle Server. Now if I open the Oracle Server, we can see that we have got .exe files here, which can be straight away run to install the Oracle server on your local machine. So if I double click this, I will get the message that the software is already there. I have already configured and installed Oracle server because it takes decent amount of time. So I will click OK and finish. It's quite simple installation. You can simply click next, next, next. The only two things that you need to remember is where you have installed Oracle your oracle installation directory that you will that, that you will be setting up during the installation and the second would be your sys password so it will prompt you during the installation to set up a password for your sys user please do remember that password once the installation is complete how can we actually check that oracle server is up and running in your search bar open the services app and in services app if you type Oracle, you can see there are multiple services that have been created during the installation. Most of them are running. So this confirms that Oracle is up and running. So if I close this, come out of Oracle directory. Now we'll go to SQL Developer. So if I open SQL Developer, I can see that there is straight away an application that can be opened. You don't need to perform any installation. It comes as a prepackaged application itself. So if I open the SQL developer, you will see something like this. Now we will set up our first sys user. So if I create an Oracle connection by right clicking Oracle connections and then new connection. I will give it name as sys. The username would be sys. The role would be sysgba. And here you will put the password that you have set up during the installation. I'll say say password. Now if you have installed your Oracle server on your local machine, your local host should work. And if it doesn't, you can get the host name of your machine from db, from tnsnames.ora file in your Oracle server directory. I'll keep the default settings here. I'll test the connection. It says success. And then we'll connect it. So now we have got our first sys user. We will use this user to create further users that are needed for Simaki Extreme configuration. So if I bring it down and come out of SQL Developer, the last folder is your Simaki pre-configured package. If I open this, there are a few configuration files that we need to set up here to point to the right database and right files and Java, etc. But we will be doing this in our next lecture. Thank you.